All right, everybody, welcome back to Mad Money. Today we're going to be talking about Fundrise. We have a mid-year letter for 2022 talking specifically about the Fundrise opportunity comparatively to the stock market. Now, you guys know I love the stock market more than anything. I invest a lot of money into it. I was just getting off the phone with Captain Ryan talking about the S&P 500 and how I'm going to be continuing to simplify my portfolio. Of course, I'm going to still have some great positions like Talentier and others. But the SP 500, man, it's just a tried and true, really good method, especially when it's deflated in price, you know, just under 20% or so. But I want to talk about this mid year letter for 2022. Now, if you guys are interested in Fundrise or you haven't yet, I'll have a link in my description. You guys can check it out. And if you invest a certain amount of money, I think it's, you know, a couple thousand dollars. If you invest in Fundrise, we both get 50 to $100, depending on how much you put in. But enough on that. Let's just get into the actual letter. So 2021, the Fundrise delivered our strongest ever total performance, generating an average net 22.99%, so just under 29, sorry, just under 23%. To the first half of 2022, produced our strongest ever relative performance, beating the S&P on nearly a 25% basis. Public stocks, as measured by the index, saw their worst start to the year since 1970, which is true, down near 20%. In contrast, the average net return for Fundrise for the first six months was about 5.5%. The Fundrise portfolio also produced similar out, relative outperformance when it compared to the public real estate investment trusts and seeing their share of prices fall steeply as well. I have seen this personally in Stag Industrial, where it was trading around $45 at the beginning of the year. It's trading at just over $30 now. Um, a lot of that has to do with the warehouses and people pulling back on a lot of warehouses. Um, in the United States at the moment, I'm a believer in it long term. Um, I just believe it's a current retracement in the e-commerce market, which if you've ever heard me talk about that, I could probably talk about it in a different video. So now we're just going to touch a little bit about first half 2022 returns to clients for these accounts versus public REITs and public stocks. So Fundrise for all clients, dividends was about 1.22%. Public REITs was about 1.37%. So that's pretty much even comparatively. Public stocks, which is the SP 500, 0.62%. The SP 500 on an annual basis pays about 1.2 to 1.3 percent, and so this is the first year, first half year uh, payment here. Appreciation 4.31 percent, comparatively to the 20 percent down year for public REITs, um, and public stocks is about down the same. So that's where you get that 25 percent discrepancy when you're looking at minus 19 percent here and the plus five and a half percent when it comes to Fundrise, the 25% beat of the S&P 500. So anyone's invested with us for more than a few years have heard a state many times, while well, our long-term goal is to deliver both stronger and more stable returns in the broader market, Fundrise is truly unique in our ability to outperform the market when the market is down. It should not be misconstrued as overconfidence in our ability as investors. Instead, the assertion comes from understanding the portfolio whose performance is driven by the underlying fundamentals of a high quality real estate asset combined with low model fees is structurally set up to outperform. Um, in January, they explicitly, in their warning uh, that they put out in January, credit markets are wrong. We are likely to experience sustained high levels of inflation throughout the next year. The pricing where it is today, investing in stocks comes with meaningful principal risk. We are fortunate that this is a healthy dose of paranoia, along with a diligent preparation, both from the standpoint of types of assets that they invest in, as well as the judicious use of leverage position the portfolio to withstand mounting headwinds over the past several months. In truth, the foundation for this preparation can be traced back several years as evidence in their concerns in 2019. I do remember reading that note that they've done when we noted our belief that the very late in the economic cycle and consensus driven assets such as stocks were mispriced and likely due for a significant correction. Of course, since then, we've not only witnessed the global pandemic, but also seen soaring stock prices with stocks today even after this historic rut, still early, um, nearly up 50%. The harsh reality, and I agree with the statement, that the impact of the 15 years of net zero interest rates and accompanying monetary stimulus cannot be undone in just six months. So the question is, where do we stand today? Uh, despite everything we've experienced over the last six months, I believe in the early stages of a painful and drawn out deleveraging as the Fed pursues mission to stamp out all inflation costs. Um, so interesting to say kind of where uh, where we're at and curious to look at this kind of uh, yield curve that they have in here. So 
Obviously, you had an initial spike up, and that has a lot to do with inflation, I anticipate, and it's going to come back down um, over the next year or so as maybe they relieve some of the interest rates um, that they're kind of putting into place right now, and eventually it'll kind of come back up into uh, into the future. But um, yeah, that's kind of what the Treasury yield curve forecast is kind of looking like in the in the near term. Yeah, you can kind of see all the different uh, plots in here. But anyway, that is not surprising. Over the past 30 years, investors have been trained to believe that when times get tough for the Fed, they'll always bail them out. On our schedule, most people expect that things get too bad now, the Fed will swoop in again. Again. However, we had fundraiser are less sanguine. I've never used that word before. About the Fed's ability to bring down inflation to 2% and their willingness to reverse course should they enter a recession. But inflation stays high. So... To date, the real economy has continued to clip along healthfully, um, which has buoyed the corporate earnings as a result of inflation to bring inflation down from the current rate of plus 9%. The Fed will immediately have to slow the economy for an extended period of time. That would involve doing so what so few are be currently being able to imagine, which is maintaining high interest rates despite being in a recession. So in closing, They've noted over the past few years, very little value in being overly optimistic in the stock market said prefer to address harsh realities may exist as soon as they become apparent and doing so by investing in real estate. We've stated before that the broader fundraise portfolio with primary focus on residential assets in the Sun Belt is an attractive um, asset to hold in an environment as we are aware of, and this remains true today. Additionally, continue to build up a larger cash position in the portfolio as we wait patiently for prices to continue to adjust downward. So that's being prudent. We also believe that there is a strong possibility for the paper markets, such as REIT stocks and other financial instruments tied to real estate, will see a further decline over the next several months, in which case we will potentially deploy some portion of our portfolio into public REITs or other real estate securities should the prices reflect yields better than private markets at that time. Lastly, as I've stated recently, I want to take a moment to thank all of our investors for their continued support. Thank you. Uh, at the end of the day, Fundrise is unique because of the direct relationship we have with our investors, which make up hundreds of thousands of act actual individuals, not institutions. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, this is what I kind of want to highlight specifically about Fundrise itself. And I personally do kind of a, I was originally doing more focused around dividends. Now that I've kind of gotten to the place where I have enough dividends kind of coming in, I've gone a little bit more towards growth. So you can see from an income perspective, excuse me, uh, yawn, as an income perspective, almost 2% um, in first half 2022, whereas growth, you were only getting about 1%. And if you did the balance, you kind of get a 1.22%. Appreciation now. 5% from the growth side, only 3%. So the growth overall total return is still outpacing, but the overall is about 5.5% for Fundrise portfolio. Looking specifically at each individual portfolio, um, they almost have a billion dollars in the flagship real estate fund. So congratulations to you guys. Almost 6% total return. And they almost have $220 million in the income real estate fund. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I have a lot of these uh, that they have, and I think they're going to end up consolidating a lot of these going forward um, into, say, a balanced e-read fund, income fund. Um, but yeah, I have a small portion of my portfolio in all these, but the East Coast read, man, that thing's mooned. The growth e-read is mooned, 12 13%. And so pretty cool to see where... Uh, <laughs> Well, the growth is gone, but uh, really cool, really cool article. I always like reading their articles, so I always necessarily agree 100% with what they're doing and what they're saying. I still believe equities are great for the long term, depending on what you're doing. If you're trying to trade it, I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I'm not a trader personally, but investing in the long term, especially when you have opportunities like this, when things are down 20%, 30%. Is probably prudent, but I was also cool to see this logging in this morning. A rental home community here in Houston, Texas, being bought up, and I obviously live in Houston. For those of you guys who don't know, and I also have the skyline behind me um, for my fancy green screen um, working overtime. You know what I mean? So pretty cool to be able to see investments in say Houston and, and other places um, 
so yeah, I just wanted to bring that to you guys so you had the ability to kind of see the mid-year letter and see what you would be seeing if you were an investor here at Fundrise. And um, always just trying to advertise for the platform and um, give you guys an opportunity to seek if that's something that you so, so see being a great investment opportunity for you. I want to bring it to your guys' attention. Excuse me, third yawn in this video, Jesus. So anyway, um, I know Captain Ryan's about to launch a stream. So, um, whoops, didn't mean to do that. But Captain Ryan's about to launch a stream here. And with that, um, you know, he'll be up any second. So excited to uh, grab, a, grab a quick water and a drink and maybe heat something up in the microwave real quick. And he'll be kicking off here in eight minutes. So hopefully I can get this uploaded um, to YouTube by then. So everybody, hope you have a good one. If you haven't already, check out the Funderize link in the description so we both can get 50 to 100 bucks by you signing up. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Cheers.